right, PML fans, we just talked about another potential uh, PML champion and a reigning champion at that. Uh, let's go to Hasin now, who has no championship, but he wears a crown on his logo. <laughs> <laughs> we got Coach Hasin, uh, drafted Kingdra, Klefki, Halucha, Arctazol, Stoutland, Cottony, Hippopotas, Vanilla, Sneasel, G Max, Colossal, and oh boy, does he have weather team syndrome on this team. He's got weather team syndrome, but like I just think that there's probably he's it's, it's I feel like it's a little confused. <laughs> um, he's got like he's got he's got the potential for a sand team there. Like the sand is there, but and I just sort of wonder why Kingdra is in the mix there as well. Um, just because it doesn't take advantage of the sand like another tier one potentially could, like say Ace yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I figured if he was going to pick Kingdra, you'd pick a rain setter, right? He doesn't. He's relying because I'm pretty sure does um, Klefki get rain dance? Ah, uh, yes, he does. Yeah, so he would be relying on. I mean, it's prankster, so it's not the worst, but. But you'd rather just set the set the rain. Yeah. Yeah. But I suppose it's, I suppose it is a good way of um, guaranteeing rain, right? Like. If you're versing, say, a sand team, another sand team or a sun team, you can guarantee that you, that rain will be out on turn, on turn one because you are setting the rain. Yeah, but that also leads it to where it seems like he his play will be very predictable at the same time. Hmm. In my All opinion. right. Uh, bulk. But his uh, team is so confusing, he doesn't know which bat to choose. <laughs> Took me a second. Um, in terms of bulk, <laughs> what are we thinking? Well, this is my lowest score I've given for anything in any of the grades. I gave him a four. Um, three not fully evolved Pokemon is interesting. I'm sure he's got his plans, but um, you know, I don't look at a team with Hippopotas and go, "Oh no, Hippopotas," or "Oh no, Cottony," or "Oh no, Sneeze." You know, yeah. I just don't look at it like that. Sleep on cottony at your own peril. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, re- I realize it's got, like I said, it's got uses, but it's not bulky. Is more, more the point that I was getting getting towards. It doesn't have to be bulky. Yeah. You can't hit it. Mm. Just, just spit some poison at it. You'll be fine. Um, I, I agree with you what you're saying, Stu. Um, well, I think. Th- the the big um the big hit up, the big bulky Pokemon on his team is definitely colossal um and that's really about it isn't it uh, Vanillax has got some decent special bulk and after Zolt it can take like one hit so yeah yeah the the bulk is pretty poor um and you can probably get away with um. You can run Eevee up if I light on Hippodotus, but then you're running the risk of not having sand five turns for Stoutland. So it's a bit of a bit of a funny one, isn't it? So I'm going to I'm going to put him out of out of five. I'm going to put it at a four for me. I just I, I get he has a play style and he'll probably stick to it and it'll get him wins. And maybe he's not really trying to rely on bulk anyway because I know he'd like to lead that Sneasel and Colossal and just go surf and pop the weakness policy and just start hitting things. Um, yeah, well, that's, um, that's what happened in our battle and it um, took me too long to get back into the game and got the defeat, so, you know, maybe he will just rely heavily on Sneasel, on that Sneasel and uh, Colossal combo and um, try and get opponents down to a 6v3 situation and then just uh, manage it out from there. Mm-hmm. Viable strategy. Viable strategy. <clears throat> See, this is one of those teams that looks horrible on paper, but if you know how to uh, utilize your Pokemon to the max ability, you can still win games even with a poor looking team. It's one of those teams where I wish I could watch replays of the battles because once you've got a few, you know, it's only got a few gimmicks. Once the gimmicks are known, then mm-hmm. it's not as threatening, but. If he's got enough gimmicks up his sleeve, it'll be threatening every week. 
yeah uh pokemon that's that's on you uh bring back the versus recorder or we're never playing draft again <laughs> <laughs> but not yet uh four for me on the the bulk front all right and then speak to mm -hmm. um i'm gonna give him an eight for speed because he's got a lot of fast pokemon and a lot of pokemon that can be set up fast um he's got you know kingdra has got brain potential but it just can't be used then he's got vanilla there which he said hail but again nothing to use it in but then he's got actual good good calls and good synergy with team control where he's got sneezel that can providing um surfs onto that gmx course to get the steam engine off to max out its speed and then that makes it quite quick, um, even though Colossal in itself is, is quite a quite slow Pokemon. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> has got a, with the Unburden. Um, he hasn't really got anything to redirect attacks from it, so I can't really get like something like a curse off um, to drop its speed and then reset it and then get the Unburden boost. But um, it has the potential there to be able to 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 drop a berry or to um, use an item and get that speed boost as well. So I think he's got good speed. Mm -hmm. I'd stall him to the end arc as well with the sand rush with Hotodus is good too. So yeah, good speed. Hey. Does Arcazol get sand rush? Hey? I thought Arcazol got slush rush. Oh, Arcazol's got slush rush. Sorry, I was thinking Drakazol. Yeah, no. Um, that's why I yeah. said... Nothing. Vanilla X can't do anything because I thought I was just, I read it as Dragon's on. Probably should put my glasses on. No. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's good though. That's good then. Yeah, I gave I gave seven for the speed tiers, not because anything's particularly slow or fast or whatever, but it's the potential speed. Like if he gets rain, Kendra can be fast, or if he gets an unburden boost off, Wolitra can be fast. Well, the same with Stoutland or Arctazolt, Colossal, but. I can't give it any higher than a seven, I don't think, because it's not naturally fast. It's not a naturally fast team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta you gotta really force the speed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you get phased out really or weather deliberate... changed at the wrong time, you're in trouble. Yeah, you really gotta deliberately set like a terrain, or you deliberately have to set a, a weather to get that boost off. Mm. Yeah, I'm bring a cloud nine and on that one, and just uh, give a seven as well. Um, wall breaking. Uh, I gave him a six for wall breaking. The only <laughs> real thing he's got for wall breaking is Colossal and Kingdra as his two main options. And um, they need help before they break anything. Yes. And I think if um, people are alive to the Sneasel Colossal um, combination, I think it'll be a pretty hard, hard thing to try and get off. Consistently, um, if you if anyone is running fake out on Sneasel, I mean it still gets in a focus though. But if um if you if there are options out there that can really do a lot of damage to Colossal before it can even do anything back. If you can get an earthquake off a fast earthquake off, if you can you know get a rock slide in, you know, it's going to be you know, could potentially be a bad time for them. Mm -hmm. You gave it a six, you said? Six, yeah. He's got options there. I don't know really if he's going to be able to set them off week in, week out. He might catch his... I gave it, yeah. I gave it a seven for the same reason as the speed tiers. They're not natural wall breakers. They need a bit of help. So they are obviously threatening. If Kingdra gets set up, then it's threatening. I lose but, it yeah, yeah, I give it a seven. Um... Yeah, or um, Bolt Beak. Stupid Bolt Beak. Yeah, that naturally is just hard hitting. I guess I'll give it a six. I was going to say five, but I'll give it a six. Uh, support. So I think you got support at, at the Wazoo, to be honest. There's support everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um. 
and that's one of the big things with this team is it's a, it's a, he's got great supporting options. Um, and I think that's what's going to really carry his team into those into those winning positions. Like, and it's not even just the status moves. The Sneasel supporting G Max Colossal with a Surf is really really great for it. Um, you know, provide, it provides great support for Colossal and, that, and by extension the team. Um, Hippopotus, Hippopotus, um, <laughs> get Hip Sand Setter. He goes, hey. Hip hop anonymous. Yeah, good luck. I'm having a stroke trying to say it. <laughs> um, he's got a sand setter. He's got a he's got a hail setter. He's got you know, though you can interchange them week in week out. He doesn't have to bring you know a particular hail setter or a sand setter. He can alternate. Like he doesn't have. He can bring hippo and um, stoutland one week, or he can bring arcazolt and vanilla in another week. You know, he's got options there to so overall support his team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Clefty with dual screens, I think, is great. Courtney with Tailwind and Mento and substitute options is fantastic. Um, I think overall he's got a really, really great support, like team support. It's fantastic. I think he's. I think I'd give it a nine. Yeah, for all that and more, I give him a nine as well. I give him an eight. Uh, I mean. I'm giving him an eight mostly because uh, he he does have tremendous support, but even then, some of his supporters are not going to take hits, or they'll do what they need to do, but they're not going to stick around long enough to do it again. In my opinion, especially when you can be double targeted. If you get double targeted, it doesn't matter how set up you are. Mm-hmm. You kind of struggle to stay alive. All right, and lastly but not least, that brings us to Tex Energy. Well, I give I give it a six. I I don't know. Multiple weathers in one team is always going to be a struggle, let alone trying to get three. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like this team would have been better synergized if it focused on even two weathers. Um, if he was adamant on getting Kingdra, then he should definitely have gone for a rain setter. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I don't gave much, him... much more to, no, I've got not much more to say on it, to be honest. I gave him an eight, and I th- and the reason I gave him an eight is I think because, well, it is because, um, he's got some good strategies in there, but it's not so much about the team cause as much as it is about the actual strategy that he's putting in place. So he's got the. Obviously, we've spoke, spoken a lot about the and colossal combination that this has been done to death. But if you look as, as well at the Arcazolt, sorry, the, um, the Vanilla Arcs, Arcazolt, and Halucha combination, if he brings in Vanilla Arcs and Arcazolt together, you can max Arcazolt to get the, to, to get um, max electrics off. If he can keep that max, <laughs> that's right off, he can bring Halucha in later to get the um, burden boost too. So I think he's got really, really good and really thought out um, synergy there, and he can also be, he can also get you know Cottony's Talons off. And the, the supporting options that he's got also lend itself to the synergy of the team. So I think he's done really, really quite well with his synergy. So I'm going to give him an eight. Yeah, I'm going to meet you in the middle, and I'm going seven. Seven sounds good to me. And uh, what is y'all's final tallies for Hasim? 33. All right. 33, 32. I have 32. 36, I think. The generous jaded. The generous jaded. Jeez. All right, I need to tell you Look out! Who's look out! Whoever's next, Kenneth. Unlike yours, you're gonna get an absolute flogging now. <laughs> All right, and that was Hasim <laughs> team, the Holy Crusaders.